Okay, so good morning and welcome to Open Text Tuesday. Just a quick note that today's presentation will be recorded and we'll be distributing the link to the recording in a follow up email. And as someone who was born and raised in Niagara, I would like to open our session today with a land acknowledgement to give gratitude to the Indigenous people of this land and recognize the problematic legacy of colonialism in Canada. Niagara College acknowledges the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples, many of whom continue to live and work here today. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and is within the land protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Today, this gathering place is home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples, and acknowledging reminds us that our great standard of living is directly related to the resources and friendship of Indigenous peoples. Thank you. So my name is Jacqueline Chambers Page, or Jackie, in case we haven't met. My official title is Library Facilitator Information Literacy. I'm also the lead for copyright and OER information at the Daniel J. Patterson campus. And I'm the library liaison for the Artisan Distilling, Beverage Business Management, Brewmaster, and Winery and Viticulture programs. And with me is Jeff. So go ahead and introduce yourself, Jeff. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Jeff Brown. I'm a library facilitator uh, and of user experience. I'm a, also a liaison for uh, culinary studies. Happy to be here. Thanks, Jeff. So we have four main goals with our session today. First, we will provide an introduction to the characteristics of an open educational resource. Then we'll discuss the importance of OER to both faculty and students. We'll share some of the support available to you with OER at Niagara College. And finally, we will share some examples and starting points of OER that are relevant to the Canadian Food and Wine Institute. So the session may be a bit of a review to some of you, especially if you attended last year's Open Text Tuesday, but we do have some exciting new support options for you. So stay tuned. So let's begin with a definition of OER from OER Commons, which states that open educational resources are teaching, learning, and research resources that reside in the public domain or have an intellectual property license that permits their free use and repurposing by others. So to break that down, it basically means that OER allow educators to bypass traditional copyright restrictions by allowing creators to assign user rights themselves. And usually this follows the five R's of open. What are these five R's? Well, first is retain. That's the ability to make, own, and control a copy of the resource. For example, to download and keep your own copy. Then we have Reuse, which is to use your original, revised, or remixed copy of the resource publicly, for example, on a website, in a presentation, in a class. Then there is Revise, which is the ability to edit, adapt, and modify your copy of the resource. Then we have Remix, which is to combine your original or revised copy with other existing material to create something new. And then redistribute, and that's the ability to share copies of your original, revised, or remixed copy with others. And OER can take any format. Books and textbooks are the most prevalent and common format that you'd probably think of, but OER can also be full courses, journals, multimedia resources, supplementary teaching resources, assessments, and more. So how can you tell if something is an open educational resource? Well, the key is to check the license or the terms of use. 
And normally, well, not normally, but quite often, you'll see a Creative Commons license on an OER. That's the easiest way for a creator to put something out to be used as an OER. The Creative Commons licenses are based on four primary conditions. There's the attribution or buy that allows others to copy, distribute, display, and perform the work and derivative works based upon it, but credit must be given to the original creator. And you'll find this condition in all of the Creative Commons licenses, except for a public domain, which I will discuss in a moment. And there is non-commercial or NC. That means others can copy, distribute, display, and perform the work and derivative works based upon it, but for non-commercial purposes only. Then we have no derivative works, ND, which means others can copy, distribute, display, and perform only verbatim copies of the work, not derivative works based upon it. And this particular condition is one that you won't see on an OER because, again, OER is based on those five R's, which a big component of that is that ability to remix, re reuse, revise. So the no derivatives is something that you might see on other kinds of material that is open, but not necessarily an open educational resource. There is a slight difference there. And finally, we have share alike or SA. That means others can distribute derivative works only under a license identical to the license that governs the work. So these four conditions are combined in various ways to create different licenses. When you're choosing an OER, it's important to check the license, make sure you are fulfilling those required conditions. And these are the six main licenses that you may find. And you can see how it's, it's a matter of breaking down each license into its components to understand what you can do with that material. For example, if we used the attribution, the buy and the share alike, the SA, and we combine those together, we would form the CC by SA license, which means that you must provide an attribution if you're reusing the work, and you have to put this exact same license on any remix copies that you make. So if you took someone else's work, you revised it a little bit, you have to give credit to that original owner, and you also have to stick this exact same license on your new material that you have made. So obviously there are varying degrees of openness to each of these licenses, but the conditions are clearly outlined so you can understand how the material can be used and full information for each type of license can be found on the Creative Commons website, including how to provide those attributions. There is another type of Creative Commons license you may find, the CC0, which indicates the creator has given up their copyright entire entitlement and donated the work to the public domain with no restrictions at all, not even attribution, which is not to be confused with the public domain mark, which indicates the work is no longer eligible for copyright protection around the world, which is usually due to its age. Although they end up in the public domain for different reasons, works with these designations are free from any copyright restrictions and can be used for any purpose, even commercially. So let's talk a little bit about the benefits of open educational resources. There are a number of reasons to consider making the change to open educational resources, including student savings, unlimited access, educational equity, collaboration, and creativity and innovation. So let's take a few moments and just explore each of these a little bit further. Starting with student savings. So this is perhaps the most obvious uh, benefit of switching to open educational resources in place of expensive textbooks. This can have a positive impact on students' mental health and their academic success, in addition to their bank accounts. So a few stats for you. According to the US Census Bureau, textbook costs have risen 129% over 15 years, which is nearly four times the rate of inflation. The Financial Consumer Agency of Canada 
as well as the Niagara College itself, recommends students budget at least $1,000 per year for course materials on top of their tuition. And McLean's broke down the cost of course materials by university program in a 2018 study, ultimately finding that students spend an average of $773 per year on textbooks. And these amounts can simply just be out of reach for some students. The University of Guelph conducted a study in 2016 that found 57% of undergrads had not purchased a textbook at least once because of the cost. 87% of the respondents indicated some level of concern about their decision to not buy the textbook and the impact this would have on their ability to succeed at their studies, with some commenting on the damaging effects of the stress on their mental well-being. Now, eCampus Ontario became the central hub for OER in Ontario in 2017, and since that time, over 200 Ontario post-secondary educators have adopted OER textbooks from their open library, saving Ontario students almost $12 million overall. So that's a, it's a lot of numbers and it's, it makes a big impact. In addition to those savings, OER can also benefit student retention. Studies have found that eliminating the challenge of prohibitive textbook costs can increase uh, student retention, uh, such as a study, oh sorry, a survey in 2017 where 17% of respondents from BC stated they had dropped a class due to the cost of textbooks. And other studies have identified a correlation between lower dropout rates and textbooks. And full links to these studies can be found in our references. We'll also send the slide decks out after the presentation so you can read a little more about that. And then we have student access. So another wonderful benefit to OER is we no longer have to worry about those bookstore delays. And no longer students have to wait for their OSAP loans to be able to afford the books or have to figure out a way to get to campus to borrow textbooks or to buy a book. You know, no more worrying about the bus, the bus schedule and getting there between work and everything else. All of that is just, it's gone. And no more waiting for a reserve from the library collection. Though there's, this is of course when we're on campus, but you know, a lot of our textbooks, if we have them, which we don't have all of them, but if if an instructor chooses to put a textbook in our reserve collection, most of them are four hour loans, some are a day, but there's no guarantee you're gonna be able to get them when you need them. Now it should also be noted that free access does rely on an internet connection, which can be a challenge for some students. However, if free reliable internet isn't an option, OER textbooks can also be frequently purchased for low or no cost and can be shipped directly to students. And usually they arrive very quickly. Which brings us to equity in education. So the ability to remix and customize resources offers instructors the opportunity to include marginalized voices and different points of view in course material, you're no longer beholden to the textbook uh, author if you don't agree with something that's in there or if you want to add something to the conversation. Um, say a lot of our material may come from America, maybe we want to add in like a Canadian Indigenous perspective to something, you can do that with OER. You can change the material, you can add things, take things out, mix it up so that you're teaching what you think your students should know. And there's also this nice added benefit, which is the need for publisher permission to make changes for accessibility purposes is eliminated. So any adaptations 
that are required for a student to be able to use a resource can just be made freely. We don't have to wait for any special permission to do that or go through any process. We can just make those changes. OER also offers the opportunity for meaningful collaboration with other teaching professionals in your field from anywhere in the world to create those the best possible resources for students. OER creators can share their knowledge and build on their personal and professional networks and really get to know other people around the world that are teaching and dealing with the same things that you're doing in your field. So it's a really nice opportunity. And kind of closely tied to that is the chance to really exercise your creative muscles. You can develop new skills, exercise your creativity, try something new, maybe even try some new learning technologies around the way, some new softwares, and do some exploring and see what, what's out there that can really inspire you, make some changes. So now that you're sufficiently inspired, you'd probably like to know how to get started with OER. NC Libraries and Learning Commons has put together a few resources to help you. First, let's take a look at our OER subject guide. This guide is available from the link at the, the bottom here. Or you can visit our subject guides page on the library's website. So let's take a quick look at that now. So from the library's website, we have a subject guides icon right here. And down at the bottom, on this side, there's a for faculty and staff section, and you can get to it there. You can also get to it through the faculty and staff services page, which is a, a new page that we just added. So you may want to get it from there too. So this guide contains further information about OER. It covers a lot of what we've talked about today, but you can learn more about it in there. It also has some tips on how to adopt an OER, which means you just take an existing material and just use it exactly as is in your course. How to adapt, so that means you take something and revise it and then use it. Or how to create your own. We also have a section on find OER by subject area. So if we take a look at that here. So what we've done is we've pulled out the program areas of Niagara College and just create a quick little start list of starting points that you may want to look at just to get an idea of what's out there. So taking a look at culinary arts here, we've pulled out some example textbooks to take a look at. There's also a list of general repositories, some further textbooks, and other types of OER like modules, simulations, lessons, plans. You can see examples of all of those here. So you go repositories. And these are all like pre-done searches for you just to help you get started because there is a lot out there uh, when it comes to open educational resources. There's a lot of kind of grassroots types of initiatives just coming up all over the place. So it, and there's really not, there's no one giant repository where you can get to all of it, but there are a few really strong central points. So that's what we've taken to, to come up with these little examples for you to work with. So they're just so that way you're not just going out into the wild, you at least got a bit of a map for you with these, these pathfinders here. And there's also a link to the OER toolkit, which is a resource created by College Libraries Ontario that has even more information about uh, as a faculty member, how to incorporate OER into your courses and advocate for others to use OER. So there's great information on that as well. Then we have something that's new. It's our, it's an OER that was actually created by myself and my counterpart, Cisco. It's called the OER at NC, a quick start guide for Niagara College faculty. 
and it's, a, it's just a handy guide that has everything in one place for you. So let's take a quick look at that as well, and you may have seen it. It was also in our subject guide, but also available from this direct link. And we created this resource using Pressbooks, which is something that you'll see a lot of in OER, especially if you're using anything from eCampus Ontario. It's an authoring tool that is available for free to any Ontario post-secondary educator. And it's made available through eCampus Ontario. So if you're interested in creating your own OER with Pressbooks or adapting a Pressbooks, an existing Pressbooks OER, just let us know and we'll connect you with how to get started with your account and all of that great stuff. But part of the reason uh, Cisco and I created this guide was so we would have experience using Pressbooks. So if you do choose to get started and use this resource, we have some experience with how to put together a book like this. So we've got three main sections here, a bit about, uh, we get further into the licensing aspect of things and why OER matters. So that's our advocacy piece here. So again, you can read further about how you can incorporate social justice topics and that kind of thing into your OER, and then a bit about how to get started. It's all in a nice little little guide for you. Again, uh, if you wanted to find that from our OER guide, it is listed right there. Okay. And finally, this is something totally new for 2021 we will be offering funding opportunities for adapting an open text. So there is a bit of a sneak peek about this, the details of this program on the OER guide. I'll show you here so you can take a little peek at what it's going to be. Um, it is a pilot program. So all the, the details are just Final details are just getting worked out, but it will be coming soon. So look for a, a message to come from your associate dean about the application process very soon. So exciting, exciting times for that. Get your ideas ready. So for the rest of our session today, we're going to look at some examples of OER. And I wanted to start by highlighting these two OER textbooks in particular because they are being used successfully in Niagara College classes. These are both examples of the material you can find in eCampus Ontario's open library. So let's take a closer look. Start here with professional communications. So this book is obviously being used in our communications program. <laughs> And it was actually, a, it's an example of an adaptation. So, so our professor in our Academic and Liberal Studies Division, Wendy Ward, actually adapted the original version of this to create this Canadian edition. And you see how this works. So if you did want to order a print copy, you can easily do so. So again, those students that don't have reliable internet, they may want to go this route. So you could get a color edition for $44 or get the black and white for $13, which is fantastic. It saves a lot of the OSAP money for, for food, <laughs> for other important things. But and if you wanted to just read it online, we just go right here and take a look at it. And let's open it up. So you can see this is where Wendy has given her acknowledgement to the original creators and talked a little bit about the collaboration process. And if we just take a quick look at a chapter, let's say, let's take a look at the audience chapter here. This is the kind of thing you can do in Pressbooks. You can pull out your learning objectives into separate boxes. You can add some nice graphics and you can also add things like this. This is an interactive element built into the textbook for students to check their understanding of the content. And these are things that Wendy added to the book, things that she wanted in particular her students to learn. So she made sure that they were added as activities that they could reinforce that learning. 
and this is using uh, a tool called H5P, which is also available for eCampus Ontario. You can get a free account to start using that, and you can reuse ac other activities that other instructors in Ontario have created. You can mix and match, reuse those, or make your own. Again, uh, Cisco and I have experience with that, so we can help you with it, and we can help you get started. Just let us know if you're interested. So that's what, what it looks like. Um, the other book we have here is Introduction to Psychology, so very similar. This one was a straight adaptation, so no changes were made. It's just being used as is. And again, you can order your print copy, read it online. And there's also this nice feature here, which is additional resources. So we've got case studies with this one, um, some instructor resources, a study guide here. I believe under the instructor resource, you could get things like um, quizzes and, and that kind of thing. They're not freely available to, so that students can see them, but you can contact them to get those. So very cool. And again, uh, the license is also listed right there. So CC by NCSA. So attribution, non-commercial, share alike. So those are just two examples of things that are being used at Niagara College. I wanted to take some time now just to share a particular resource for the CF. WI, and I'm not going to lie, it can be a bit challenging to find OER for some of our more specialized programs, such as those of the Canadian Food and Wine Institute. However, they do exist, such as this book on viticulture and winemaking under climate change. And let's take a quick look at that. So this isn't coming from eCampus Ontario. This is coming from another repository. And this is what I mean when I say it's a bit of a wild west kind of grassroots everywhere you look. You just have to keep hunting to find these things and hunt them down. It can be a bit of a challenge, but that's what we're here to help you do. So if you give us some topics, uh, we can work with you and find, do our best to find something that's going to, to help you, or at least something that you can adapt into, into something that will work for your class. So again, this one, you can order a print version here, or you just download the full PDF right here. And you see it's got a CC BY license, so you could make adaptations as you need to. We can just take a quick look at it. Let me take a moment to download on my computer. There we go. So this one, a little bit different, not a straight read online like the ones in eCanvas Ontario. It's downloading as a PDF version. It may take a bit of time when I'm recording. My internet bandwidth tends to get very confused. So we may not be able to, to open it up just yet, but that's how you get it for that particular one. You download it as a PDF and you can edit that PDF and make your changes as, as you like. So I'm going to turn it over to Jeff now and he's going to share some ex additional examples of OER. Thanks, Jackie. Uh, that's great. Uh, yeah, but as Jackie was saying, I'm going to uh, share my screen. So the first area I was going to show you was a general repository, uh, and it was going to be um, the base food and drink resource. So if we click on the general repository um, title there at the bottom, it will link up to our uh, library uh, homepage. Because um, one of the other access points I wanted to show you was the recently added faculty and staff services icon, which lists all the other uh, services uh, that we offer faculty and staff at the college. So if we click on that, 
we'll see uh, the breadth of services that we can offer you in, in your program and your classes, which I'm sure many of you are well aware of. But also in here, there's the access point to uh, the OER resources that Jackie was showing you uh, earlier in the presentation. So just another access point. Uh, we can click on uh, OER and go into that content. And what I like to do when I'm searching is I like to find the OER by subject. So I go over to uh, the right-hand side of the screen underneath uh, the home drop-down menu there, and I click on uh, the culinary arts uh, resources that we have. So as Jackie was saying, this is an area where we've highlighted specific culinary collections. Uh, we're going to scroll down the screen a little bit, and we're going to find under uh, general repositories, we're going to find the base uh, food and drink resources database. And we'll click on that. Now, base is one of the world's most uh, voluminous uh, search engines, especially for academic web resources. It provides more than 150 million documents for more than 7,000 sources. Um, about 60% of the index content is free and available for open access. And uh, BASE is operated by Belfield University Library. So what we can do in here, I wanted to show you um, sort of the specific content that it had and even has a bit of a, a local flair. So if we type in the search bar, Viticulture and Ontario, uh, we can see what kind of uh, resources come up. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised to see uh, the, the scope of Canadian content on here. So um, as that is just loading, you can see uh, right off the hop, we begin to see uh, stuff about 30 Bench and Beamsville and Niagara Peninsula. But one of the things I like to do when I'm in these databases, or any database for that matter, is I like to check out the filters and how to sort my results. Very simple thing you can do on uh, the base data database is uh, to change the relevance. And what I like to do is change the relevance just at the top of the um, left-hand screen there uh, to uh, ascending uh, data publication descending order. Sorry, descending, yeah. And that way it will bring the most recent uh, article up to the top of, of our list, of our results list, uh, of the 52 uh, hits showing uh, on this page alone. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit, we can be begin again to see Niagara Peninsula, Ontario being mentioned in some of these. We look at Article 3, Spatial Variety in Ontario Riesling Vineyards. Um, uh, yes, soft vine water status and vine performance. If we click on the title, we can enter into that content. Okay. So in here, you see uh, all different sorts of things. Um, you're seeing, you know what, Jackie? Uh, you're beginning to see all the usual uh, indicators that is an academic article. Um, you have the author's names and the, the volume and issue and the date of publication, uh, which is May uh, 27th, 2020. So you can see it's very, um, yeah, very uh, relevant and up to date. Um, if we scroll down the screen a little bit, we can find to the right of the screen there, we can see the APA citation already made for you. Uh, so if you need to uh, reference this, uh, you can and, uh, and put that in, in your presentation or share it uh, with your, your class. Um, so they're freely available, really specific um, viticulture, uh, resource um, that is Ontario centric. So just to kind of show you the sort of scope that we have uh, of, of resources in our OERs. Um, there is uh, some more uh, tabs here like supplementary data and metrics. Um, if you're looking to highlight that information just above the abstract, uh, you can download that in a PDF and, uh, and use that. At will, I'm just looking for the copyright information here, which would be at the bottom, I would think. Um, all right, I am not seeing it. Yes, here we go. 
click on that. Um, so you can see here that it's CC uh, Creative Commons Attribution License that allows others to share their work uh, as long as you acknowledge this authorship in a publication of this journal. So that's where the citation uh, piece I showed you, the APA citation, uh, comes in handy. So there you go. There's a uh, viticulture resource um, that is Ontario-centric. If we can go back to the slides, and we'll move on to the next resource that I was going to highlight. Uh, this one's from eCampus Ontario. Um, if we click on the link there, we'll go back out to uh, the culinary page, and we're going to go down the screen a little bit um, to uh, to, I believe, um, e-textbooks is the area. Uh, sorry, just down a little bit further. Yes, to e-campus Ontario Culinary Arts, just above there. Sorry. I, uh, and e-campus Ontario Library provides educators and learners with access to more than 500 free, only licensed educational resources. Um, the library was launched in 2017 in a partnership with the BC campus. And since the initial launch, eCampus Ontario has sought to continually improve their uh, library and to meet the needs of Ontario post-secondary educators and learners, making it a great uh, uh, resource for our college specifically. Um, so what I like to do when I'm in here is I like to uh, put in my own uh, search phrase. So I'm going to put in um, food safety. And I'm going to go to the filters on the right hand, hand side of the screen again. I'm going to go to additional features. And I'm going to select ancillary resources. Um, meaning that it will not only uh, be a resource, but there will be uh, additional uh, features that may be useful in our class. Um, so food safety, we can see here the second uh, choice looks like it might work for us, food safety, sanitation, and personal hygiene. Uh, if we select that first there, we can see that it's presented uh, much like an example. Jack he gave a little bit earlier. We can see that it they published was 2014, that it is a Creative Commons license, and we'll give you the ability to, uh, you can select that, the CC uh, link there, Jackie. And you can see that in there, if you ever forget what um, the Creative Commons agreement is, it's telling you that you are free to share this content and redistribute, that you're able to adapt and remix it, uh, to transform it or to build upon. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit more, you can see that under the following um, uh, on the following terms, there's the attribution license. So if you do use it or make changes to it, you always have to indicate what changes were made. And uh, you also have to um, refer to the, um, the original uh, document. You have to uh, cite that. And you can't put any restrictions on it if you have changed it. They want you to continue on uh, making it shareable and uh, and usable with the academic community. So if we go back to the actual textbook, um, we will see that uh, there's a brief de description if you wanted to uh, learn more about what you're getting into here. Uh, you can select the format, and we'll select that drop down there. Um, just underneath, just above the description, we can select the format and see that we could read it as a PDF. We could open it in an open uh, document text. Uh, can we show that example? I think everyone knows what a PDF looks like. And we'll see how quickly that opens, hopefully. But what this will be, this will essentially be a Word document uh, that you can enable editing in, and you can make uh, changes to that. 
So you could add content to it uh, specific from uh, your slides or, or something that you wanted to, uh, to share, or you could put something very uh, Ontario-centric, uh, some of the regulations in Ontario that are, are applicable to food safety uh, in, in our province, and you can put that within the work. So um, that's an example of how easy it is to uh, adapt uh, a, a textbook, uh, an OER textbook. Jackie, can we go back to the um, to that page? Um, if we open up additional resources, uh, that drop down menu, we will see that um, there's a there's a text link available to us. So um, if we select that, it would give us a prompt to email uh, the instructor uh, for for where you could request uh, uh, their examples of, of tests. So, I mean, the reason why you have to email and they're not readily available is so that there's a bit of uh, protection and a bit of, a, I guess, firewall between who gets the tests. Uh, so you, your students can't search this up online and uh, have a copy of the test and, uh, and uh, you know, know all the answers before going in, which would be an ideal uh, situation for them. And uh, but uh, you, you as an instructor or a professor, you can contact uh, this resource and uh, get a copy of a test and adapt it or use it uh, as it's applicable to this work specifically. Um, if we go back to the slides, Jackie, the final um, resource I wanted to show you was in our Merlot uh, database. Uh, so Merlot is a multimedia education resource for learning. Um, it is uh, started in 1997 and was developed uh, and provided uh, free access uh, to all their content. By July 2000, 23 systems and institutions of higher education became uh, partners in Merlot. So that's sort of the breadth of comment of, of uh, the breadth of uh, content we're looking at here. Jackie, if we could go up to the advanced search options and search material search just in the right hand corner. There. Um, so I just want to show you that most of these databases have an advanced search screen, just like a lot of the other databases that the library supplies. Um, if we're uh, in here, you could uh, use filters such as uh, uh, user ratings to, to uh, enter material quality. So in the second uh, column there under material quality, uh, if we can select user rater, ratings. Um, we can also select uh, on some of the drop downs at the side of the screen here that we want no cost affiliated with the book. An important piece and benefit of the OERs. And the license type we would like would be Creative Commons. Creative Commons, yeah. And uh, the search phrase we're going to look for is uh, simple. We're just going to search pastry. So because we've selected um, all these uh, attributes, we can just hit uh, search and see what kind of results uh, appear and how they appear. OK, so we have three, which is pretty good. We can see that the filters that we selected are showing on the other, uh, on the other side of the screen. Uh, you can see uh, college. Uh, General Ed has been selected, uh, user ratings, and no cost in Creative Commons as well. So that's why we have three results. Um, if we go into modern pastry and plated desserts, um, we'll go to the material. Um, and it will open up here. <clears throat> And we'll begin to see that it does have a five-star user rating, just under quality there. Um, it has the ability to do uh, bookmarks. We have the title of the uh, textbook. We have a brief description. Um, we have the year that was last modified, November 9th, 2019. And we have the audience that it's for, which is a college general or college lower division. So this might be a good entry-level uh, open access textbook. 
Um, you can see the Creative Commons license listed there. Uh, again, with the ability to share, adapt, um, as long as we attribute and uh, place no additional restrictions on it. Um, if we open up uh, the actual textbook, We can see the way that this presents. A little bit different, but a lot of the same attribute, attributes there. You can see uh, on, on the left-hand side of the screen there, the different ways to get the book, all the different readable formats. So if we select readable there, you can see there'll be uh, PDF uh, on, on the, the web browser, um, or uh, you can even download it for your, your Kindle. But maybe more importantly, there's the editable, <laughs> edit editable uh, versions of the book as well, where you could download the open doc text, uh, text again and make changes as you saw fit, as long as you make the proper attributions. Um, there's also supplementary uh, materials listed there as well. We can select that and see that there is an ancillary resource uh, to another test bank. So uh, again, a valuable resource uh, that is there uh, for you to, to access. Uh, so you can see how it, you know there is a lot, even though it's a very specialized program, the the uh, the culinary and the Canadian Food and Wine Institute uh, topics. There is material that uh, speaks to. Um, a lot of the interests that you uh, share with in, within your classes. Um, so those are the, the three that I wanted to, to show you, all available from your um, culinary uh, OER topics list. Um, I do want to um, kind of leave this portion by saying that we have uh, references listed there that we'll be sending out, but please know that both Jackie and I are, are here to to help. So if you're having problems finding OERs, or if you're looking for something very specific and you're not able to find them, or you um, have questions about them, we're definitely here to help. So you can always contact us directly, and uh, we will be more than happy to put our best foot forward for you. So uh, thank you very much for your, for your time, and uh, have a good day. Everyone, so we're open to questions now, and I'll stop the recording during the questions portion.